Hey guys, today on Trailmade, we're going to be ditching the quick disconnects that are currently on Gertie and installing some anti rocks. Stay tuned. Hey guys, like I said, today we're going to be installing the Anti-Rock by Rock Jock, and this is a direct replacement for the factory sway bar system. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the sway bar system is what connects, or it is a connection point between your body and your axle that ultimately determines a lot of the travel, uh, both up and down, you can get with your wheels. Now it's really important that when you're going off-road and need max articulation, you're disconnecting. This is a quick disconnect system which pops right off uh, and it allows a lot of up and down travel. It is a little bit of inconvenience in order to disconnect this and reconnect it when you get in on and off the road, uh, but it's important that you do reconnect it when you do uh, on-road driving because when you're at high speeds, going around corners, your body will have a tendency to roll, which can actually cause you to flip if you're going at a high enough speed. Um, so the anti-rock is kind of a nice compromise. You don't have to disconnect it like you would with a standard system. Um, this allows just it, almost as much, if not just as much articulation as when you are disconnected, but at the same time, it limits the body roll when you're on the open road. So I'm really been looking forward to putting this on my Jeep. It's a nice compromise uh, between stability and flexibility, and it should be a really straightforward install. that will probably take us about an hour to an hour and a half uh, so looking forward to sharing the experience with you guys. All right, so the first step is going to be to uninstall whatever sway bars you have on there currently, whether it's aftermarket parts or factory ones. Um, they're held onto the main bracket by four uh, 15 millimeter bolts if you have like the Sport or non-Rubicon electronic sway bar disconnect nonsense. So the four bolts are located right here and on the other side, so let's zap those off first. Alright, so in addition to taking out the sway bar from the top, you need to get rid of any attachment points that it has to the axle. Uh, these ones I just had to put a vice grip since there's nothing on the back side to grip bolt wise. And then just slowly remove. And this step is just for those of us that have a metal cloak lift. They have this little bracket that attaches to your axle. Uh, that aligns the uh, disconnect correctly. All right, now that we have everything factory removed from the Jeep, it's time to start installing the Rock Jock Anti Rock. Uh, first thing we gotta do is put this bushing into the frame bracket. The wider side that has a little ring on it that goes outwards. All you gotta do is just smack it with a mallet until it comes in. And you're gonna do that on both sides. All right, so the next step is to get your brackets that come from Rock Jock and to put them where the factory ones used to sit. Now there's a, some Jeeps have a sloppy weld right here that has excess material that doesn't allow this to get seated forward enough. What you're gonna have to do is address that by either hitting it with a rotary tool or even some hand tools in order to grind that down. Definitely hit it with primer, hit it with a top coat after to make sure it's not susceptible to rust. Um, and then we can go ahead and install these parts right on there. All right, so we're gonna install this with the bushing side out, and there's two bolts that line up, one in the front and one in the back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the front one all the way and leave the back one loose. So when it comes time to smack the bar in, we have a little bit of play to get those aligned up, so. And this one will remain loose. And we'll tighten that up later. But that's what it should look like. Like I said, make sure that these do align up with the holes. If not, you're gonna have to grind away at some of the weld material right in this area. All right, so the next step is to put grease gloves on because this is gonna get dirty. Get some automotive grease. And you're just 
and make sure it is well applied in there. You're going to do this on the other side as well. The other part is you got to make sure that the ends of this are nice as greased all over. And this is going to allow this rod to go through on both sides evenly and easily. And be liberal with this because it's going to make your life so much easier. We're going to do it the other side and then we're going to smack this rod in. Alright, so like I said, the next step is to hit this rod through this bushing and through the other side. So we're going to get a dead blow. This goes in fairly easily, but a dead blow will push it through all the way. It's not too difficult, but you're going to line up with the other side and then start hitting, which is what's going to be a little tricky. So that feels pretty even and it feels like it's going through the bushing on the other side so small smacks and you don't want to hit this too hard or else the bushing is going to pop out on the other side if we do this nice and evenly we should come out the other end fairly painlessly and you want these sides to stick out evenly on both both ends and once again we're using a dead blow we don't want to damage this end middle piece we're going to check on the other side and see how even they are. Alright, so once we've hit our rod in, we need to make sure that it's even on both sides. So just measure here. It's just a hair under three quarters for me. I'm going to go on the other side and make sure that it's three quarters on the other side as well. Alright, so the next step is to tighten up this last bolt that's in the rear. Hit it with the impact and then we're going to tighten it down to 44 pounds of torque. So now we're going to put our arms. Um, I do get quite a bit of flex and a lot of travel in my current setup, so I'm not going to have them horizontal, which is going to limit the amount of down travel I could have. I'm going to put this at a little bit of an angle. So it's not completely level, it's a little bit up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check what angle it's at so I can make sure that on the other side we're doing it as well. So take our level. It's at 16 degrees. So I'm gonna to go to the other side and make sure that it's even over there as well. All right, so now we're gonna install the hardware onto the arms now that we have them properly placed. This little guy right down the middle. It's gonna need an Allen key in order to tighten that up. So we'll get it started by hand. And then the retaining bracket hardware right here. And this is what's gonna tighten it up and make sure that we're cinched correctly on that bar. So we'll tighten these up and then go over to the other side. All right, so now we're gonna be assembling the links. This is what it should look like. The ones on the left are gonna be, have this little divot right here. Um, there should be one on each side. And we're gonna be inserting the nut first. There is a reverse thread and a correct thread. The gold nut is gonna go on the reverse thread side. You can get it to go. Let me spin that all the way down. And then you'll be putting this on as well. Silver side is on the correct clockwise thread, as well as the time joint. Look a little something like that. Alright, so now we're going to put the ends on here. This top part goes through there. This is on the passenger side, so this has the standard heim joint. What we're going to do is put everything in this particular order. We're going to put the butt through. We're going to put the misalignment spacer with the wide end facing outwards. Goes through the heim joint. We're going to use another misalignment spacer. Just take our time, see if we can get it all in there. And Perfect. Now we're through. We're going to put a washer. 
and then just the nut on the back end. All right, so we have a 19 millimeter socket on the outside, and we've got a 19 millimeter socket holding this nut, or uh, wrench holding it on the inside. So just gonna tighten this up. Alright, so we're just going to tighten the jam nut on here. And this is a three quarter up top and it's a 19 on the bottom. Just going to make sure those are nice and snug, which they are. Do the same for up top. We're all set to go. Alright, so after you tighten up your jam nuts, you're done with the installation. And it was really easy, like I said, just basic hand tools. It took us all of about hour 15, hour 30. So, uh, really easy overall, but it's going to make a huge difference. Um, this is what the finished product should look like. Um, I'm going to show you some footage right now of what it looks like on the passenger side as well as the driver's side to make sure these look correct. Like I said, I installed mine at a little bit of an incline to allow me a little bit extra travel. We're going to throw the wheels on next and we'll be all done. All right, so I know it seemed like that was the end of the video, but we realized that we need to test it correctly. And if you're any type of Jeeper, you know that there's only one correct way to test your things. I think that speaks for itself. Pretty decent flex. Joining along. We'll see you next time.